Hi everyone. Good evening all. So today we are going to discuss about the next unit in electric vehicle subject. So the next unit is all about electric propulsion systems. Already we discussed this a part in the functional block diagram. Now let's try to discuss in detail about this about this electric propulsion systems. So now we are going to draw the functional block diagram of our electric propulsion system. So what is this propulsion system means? It's nothing but by using electricity our vehicle has to propel or the vehicle has to rotate is called as propulsion system. So this propulsion system work with the help of an electricity that's why it is called electric propulsion system. So we need to draw the block diagrams how many components are there how many controllers are there to make the motor to drive. Let us see here. So initially for the first we are going to have an electronic controller. Okay. So first part we are going to have an electronic controller and the next part the device you are going to have is a power electronics converter. So we are going to have a power electronics converter and after this power electronics converter we are going to have an electric motor we are going to have an electric motor so we will discuss in detail about this motor no need to worry and output of this motor we are going to have an transmission or as well as transmission and differential so this is nothing but acts like an torque splitter also so this we generally call it as a torque splitter torque splitter so output of this torque splitter we are going to connect to the wheels of our electric vehicle so here we have the wheels of the electric vehicle so this is the front wheel now let's try to connect. So we have an signal flow from here, control signal, and the control signal between power electronics to here also flows, and this is like electrical signal. And from here, it goes to the dark. Now let us try to see how this uh, works. So this electronic also requires some software components as well as hardware components. Okay. So this electronic also requires uh, some software components as well as some hardware components. Let's try to check. It. So this electronic controller. So this are uh, having an inputs. Okay. So what are the inputs it is going to have? Okay, so we are going to have the input is a first input is accelerator. So here we are going to apply the pressure. Here we are going to have accelerator is one input, and another input is nothing but a brake. So based upon how you accelerate, the electric vehicle will propel, and we have the brake. Okay, so as based upon these two inputs, the electronic controller will operate it generates required this electronic control will give the output by using the sensors i mean by directly connected to the brake as well as accelerometer through sensors and it will give the required voltage and current to the power electronic converter and this power electronic converter is connected to an but actually here this is uh, connected to an power electronic converter. So this is connected to an a battery. So here we have 
a battery connected and this battery will for example here we have the dc in the battery and here we are using an ac motor this power electronic converter will act like an inverter okay it depends upon the situation so when you have this kind of configuration now let us try to understand what are the different devices and topology used okay and output of this inverter we have ac and we are using an induction motor three phase type we are going to connect to an torque splitter and the torque purpose of the torque splitter is to split the torque and the resultant torque will be available across our front wheels which is nothing but wheel 1 and wheel 2 now so here to have we need to understand about uh, what are different uh, softwares we use under electronic controller first one is uh, we i mean variable voltage and variable frequency so we have to adjust the variable voltage and variable frequency by because uh, phi is equal to u by f so first software control is a uh, variable voltage and variable frequency next one is nothing but the software used in electronic control is nothing but uh, foc here foc is called as a uh, field oriented control so foc is field oriented control so when i start this motors we'll discuss about what is the importance of field oriented control next one next software we use in electronic control is uh, mark where this mark is nothing but uh, machine readable cataloging so machine readable cataloging machine readable cataloging okay next one we have vsc okay, which is called voltage source converter so already we know better about this voltage source converter in power electronic we'll discuss so next one is voltage source converters next one neural network fuzzy logic is also software neural network fuzzy logic control okay and fuzzy systems also so 1 2 3 4 5 6 six types of electronic based software we are using to handle this electronic controller so this electronic controller is having an input of acceleration and brake so those will be sensed by the sensors so we have sensors part at the accelerator and brake system and they are going to feed the data to the electronic controller so in the form of voltage and current so through an interpretic circuit it comes to the electronic controller electronic controller take the decision how much amount of power should be supplied to the power electronics converter and resultantly to the motor the next one coming to the hardware okay so what are the hardware are used in our electronic controller so generally this is like an uh, electronic controller where the software we are going to flash with the help of a software so the hardware we are using here, here is we use microprocessors and with memory of the microprocessor it we use then it is called as a, a microcontroller or we can use a digital signal processing controllers or we may use next one as transmitters okay so these are all purely an electronic transmitters and so we use this four components as an hardware for electronic controller okay so this electronic control consists of some interface circuits processors and sensors to perform all the things and resultant voltage and current whatever is applied to the acceleration brake will be given to the power electronics converter so now coming to the what are the components in power electronics converter okay so components used in power electronics converter so this is like uh, knowing the things better okay so in power electronics converter we use uh, 
So here we need to perform inverter action or sometimes in the reverse of regenerating mode we need to add this converter as an rectifier. So what are the devices we generally use in power electronics to perform inverting action as well as rectification action. The first one is IGBT bipolar. I mean we are going to use IGBTs, MOSFETs, BJTs. Okay. The first one is IGBT. So second one is integrated integrate bipolar transistor next one is MOSFET okay metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor and GTOs gate turn off thyristors and the next one we use is MCTs and next one we use is BJTs basically bipolar junction transistor So these are the hardware what we use the components used here and coming to the topologies or what are the methods or topologies or we call the way how you configure this or how you place the electronic components is called topology. The systematic placement of electronic components is called as a topology. Okay, so here we have multiple topologies. The first topology is nothing but uh, choppers. So already we know that. Uh, so which converts an fixed DC to an variable DC. We have class A, class B, class C, class D, multiple choppers uh, to perform quadrant action. So if you give the fixed DC value, it converts into an variable DC value. So next one already discussed. Uh, so this has to perform the power electronic converter. The power electronic converter should perform inverter action also and third one it has to perform pulse width modulation using AC motor okay so uh, we have sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique uh, to convert into required output uh, so we need to perform sinusoidal pulse width modulation also or we need to perform resonant type so these four types of topologies are used in our electric vehicle based upon how it acts like a motor or how it acts like a generator. Okay, so now coming to our, so with this we are very clear about what are the components, software used in electronic controller, what are the hardware used in electronic controller, what are the basic components used in a power electronics converter and what are the different topologies used in the converter. And coming to the battery, just battery is nothing but an energy source which is rated in terms of uh, ampere hour or multiplication of ampere hour which will be the rating of the battery will be whatever so that is all about battery which stores electrical energy in the chemical form now coming to our motor part okay so when you come to the motor part here also we need to discuss uh, about multiple concepts so the types of motors available to us is uh, so already we discussed you can use any of the type first type is DC motor second type is AC motor where we are going to call this as induction motor and next latest motor where we are going to call it as switched reluctance motor okay so this is called as a switched reluctance motor here we are going to have a switched reluctance motor and fourth one we are going to have very very important PMSM motors permanent magnet synchronous motor permanent magnet synchronous motor so in detail we will discuss about this motor you don't need to worry we will discuss about uh, how this switching of uh, magnetic resistance happens how this uh, synchronous motor the field winding is made as a uh, permanent uh, with the help of an the uh, field winding where you are going to exit with the DC supply we are making like it a permanent magnet which is called PMSM motors and next motor we are going to use uh, in the case of a uh, DC motors uh, I mean BLDC motors okay BLDC means brushless DC motor so here also brushless 
DC motor. This is also a type of DC motor, but the field winding we are going to make it like a brushless and indirectly we are going to use uh, permanent magnets in the field winding. That's why these are called permanent magnet DC motors or brushless DC motors. And one more category of the motors where we have is a uh, PM HM motors. Okay, so PM HM motors where PM HM are called as a uh, permanent magnet. Uh, permanent magnet hysteresis hysteresis motors this is all about the different types of motors dc motor ac induction motor switched magnetic resistance motor permanent magnet synchronous here all the field winding so here we have the field winding in uh, synchronous motor and dc motor this Field winding, we are going to where this field winding is an electromagnet so by supplying electricity, magnetic flux is produced. This field winding, we are completely removing and replace this field winding with a permanent magnet. So, that is about permanent magnet, synchronous motor, and brushless DC motor. And coming to the, uh, the types of software we use to run these electric motors is also very much important. Okay, so in this electric motors, we use different uh, softwares to rotate. Okay, let us try to see them in detail. So here we are going to use the softwares uh, or to design these motors, uh, we use uh, CAD, I mean computer aided design. Okay, so to design these motors, we use uh, computer aided means helped design. Okay, so compute. We are going to design this structure of the motor with the help of a computer so that's why these types of techniques are called computer helped design or computer aided design and next we are going to have finite element method the second way of designing the motors is FED FEM okay so where this is called finite element method so this is also a way of designing an motor. Third one is nothing but uh, thermal. So this is also an thermal is one kind of uh, software and next one is nothing but uh, graphics. So these are different types of uh, software we use to design all our motors uh, for the requirement of uh, propeller. So this is how we are selecting the motors uh, at different end. So we can have an, uh, a rough view of all about these uh, controllers. So here we are going to discuss about software used, hardware used, as well as uh, the topology used in the power electronics converters and the configuration. So, so what are the different uh, devices used, what are the different configurations used and we have been understood about what are the different types of uh, motors used and what are the different types of uh, software used to de design this motor. So now we want to select uh, the proper choice of an electric propulsion system for an electric vehicle or hybrid electric vehicle. So what are the needs of an hybrid electric vehicle? So the choice of an electric vehicle it depends upon number of factor. So first factor, so selection of or choice choice of an motor or electric propulsion system is based upon three factors first factor is a driver expectation so actually what driver needs or what the driver is expectation the first one feature is driver expectation this is the first factor which decides the selection of motor Second factor is nothing but uh, vehicle limitations or where we are going to call the vehicle constraints. Constraint is generally we call it as vehicle limitation. So there are some limitations to the vehicle. We cannot design the required motor or we can use not, uh, we cannot use uh, dangerous speed. So we have some vehicle limitations and this one more factor where this factor is called energy source. This energy source is nothing but there is a limitation to this energy source. 
this energy source is nothing but our battery now based upon these three factors we have to select the motor so coming to the first one what is this driver expectation okay so the proper choice of an motor selection depends upon the factor of driver driver actually requires what the vehicle constraints the two wheeler or four wheeler and what kind of battery we have to use coming to the uh, driver expectation includes uh, so what i mean the owner what actually the owner requires so driver or the owner requires uh, what is the acceleration of the vehicle so acceleration is nothing but uh, how much speed or acceleration the vehicle can propel so where this is called acceleration or speed okay so second one the maximum speed the electric vehicle can be driven so which is nothing but uh, so the maximum speed it can be driven is uh, 250 km per hour next one is uh, uh, gradability okay so when you are traveling and got road from tirumala to tirupati you need to overcome this uh, grade angle of uh, 15 degrees so the hill climbing expectation this will decide what kind of motor we need to use and next one while we are traveling to and got road with positive slope we have to overcome this alpha but when you are coming down of the hill we have an negative slope uh, here it was in the positive slope we try to act like a motor and same motor now will try to act like an generator so here we are going to generate the brake where this is called regenerative braking type so here we are going to generate the power and we are going to charge the battery the one factor which we going to decide and this is the range offered per single charge for example if you charge the vehicle okay so for example you made an battery charge so per single charge so all the four wheelers will travel 400 kilometers per single charge if you charge the electric vehicle once how many kilometers it can be driven at the range of it is 400 so based upon the, the speed of the driver i mean speed of the speed requirement of the owner and acceleration speed of the owner and in which area he is traveling and which area he is uh, having negative slopes depending upon how you how he is using the brake as a regenerative braking and how much range he requires in a single charge all these factors are nothing but owner expectation driver is nothing but the owner expectations based upon the owner expectations at the need of the owner expectation we want to select our motor so coming to the vehicle constraints so we cannot design the vehicle as per our uh, design so there are some restrictions how to design a, a motor of 5 uh, seater 7 seater and the length and breadth so where this will decide the cost so the vehicle has some limitations in its volume okay what should be the maximum length and what should be the maximum breadth of the vehicle and second one it depends upon the weight what is the total weight of a vehicle so where do we call this weight as curb weight so curb weight means is nothing but the weight of vehicle only so if you add the weight of the human being this is called total weight or gross weight so this is called curb weight or weight of the vehicle and the type of vehicle we are using so the vehicle means it may be an completely electric vehicle or it may be an hybrid electric vehicle next one payload already discussed payload so what is the load that should be carried by the vehicle that's nothing but uh, vehicle weight i mean the weight of the ev plus passenger weight so the weight of the passengers with vehicle weight is called payload so based upon uh, vehicle we cannot design as per our own we have some limitation based upon the motor availability so the volume of the vehicle the weight of the vehicle which is called curb weight so the vehicle type it is a design electric vehicle or hybrid electric vehicle it depends on the weight the payload so the payload is nothing but how many passengers it has to carry and uh, how much what is the weight so based on this vehicle constraints we want to select our motor so the next selection of a motor depends upon one more which is nothing but uh, the type of energy source you are using in your electric vehicle so the energy sources we can use in an electric vehicle is uh, the normal 
lithium ion batteries we can use so next one is so we have nickel cobalt batteries and we have lfc batteries also so based upon the fast charging requirement we can select the type of battery so we can select two types of batteries where we have two types of batteries are available for us in the market first type of battery is nickel manganese cobalt so lithium nickel manganese cobalt batteries so here these batteries are again of two types so one is nickel manganese cobalt battery next one is lfb lithium ferrous phosphate batteries so now the trending which should not catch which the electric vehicle should not catch the fire that's why we are using the lithium ferrous phosphate batteries so that is about the energy source and we can use directly batteries or we can use fuel cell so this fuel cell is nothing but we use hydrogen as a fuel cell to run the vehicle that's one more type of energy source next one is we can use the ultra capacitor so this like super capacitors where they use it to charge the where they use it to store the energy so you can use ultra capacitor as an energy source for our electric vehicle and next one we can use a flywheels okay so what is this flywheel means so this also like an capacitor we we generally call this flywheel as a, a mechanical capacitor so the purpose of this mechanical capacitor is uh, while if you start this flywheel it starts continuously rotating with less amount of inertia and continuously try to rotate that's why this is called as an flywheel the next energy source is a hybrid source you can combine all this uh, one or two energy source where this is called hybridization of sources so energy sources are battery nmc batteries and lfb battery so the batteries which cannot catch fire is a uh, lithium ferrous phosphate battery so it is recommended to use which has fast charging capabilities so we have been done a video on the different types of uh, nmc batteries and uh, lfb batteries you can see in the uh, card next one the fuel cell batteries and next one is using an hydrogen as an fuel ultra capacitor as an energy source as well as flywheel also as an energy source as well as hybridization of any of these two sources so based upon these three factors driver what the owner require what kind of structure the vehicle constraints and this called constraint means limitation by using these limitations only how to design we cannot design a 10 seater we cannot design a 20 seater we have some limitations on the volume weight everything and the driver expectations okay so based upon all these factors we are going to select our motor so there's nothing but what are the factors that are selecting our propulsion motor so this is all about uh, the functional block diagram so this call all blocks are there that's why it is called block diagram and all these block diagrams are interconnected that's why it is called uh, the functionality of this block diagram of an electric propulsion system that electric propulsion system is nothing but the motor hope i have been given the sufficient knowledge uh, to understand this propulsion system with block diagram and what are the how you select an electric propulsion system or what are the factors influencing the selection of electric propulsion system with respect to driver expectation with respect to vehicle limitation with respect to the battery source if you feel the content you are able to understand please give one valuable like please share with your friends and give your valuable comments in the comment section if you have any doubt i will answer there and please subscribe the channel please encourage these sort of channels to grow please share with your friends and ask them to subscribe which will help us like a boost for us to do more useful videos uh, to the public as well as uh, to the students under electrical engineering who are studying the subject of electric vehicle so please uh, give the valuable uh, suggestions and comments to development of this free channels uh, to the students as well as the public so thank you for watching we'll meet in the next video about uh, different types of uh, commutator commutator motors commutatorless motors thank you for watching